So in this video, we'll discuss problem number two from the 2024 AP Calc BC exam. This was the second calculator question from 2024, and what's usually sitting in that position on a BC exam is either a parametrically based problem or a polar problem. And in 2024, it was parametric. So they tell us we've got a particle moving along the curve in the xy plane. It's got its position given by x of t, y of t, times measured in seconds. X and Y are measured in centimeters. They don't give us X of T and Y of T. They give us X prime of T and they give us Y prime of T. So since X of T and Y of T represent position, X prime is going to be the velocity component in the X direction and Y prime is going to represent the velocity component in the Y direction. They tell us at time two, we've got the particle at the point three comma six. Part A asks us to find the speed of the particle at time t equals 2 seconds. Show the setup for your calculations. So if we had a velocity vector with this x component and this y component, the overall magnitude for that velocity vector would represent the speed of the particle. So this is a formula that you've likely used many times as you've been preparing for the AP exam. What we're going to do is we're going to evaluate the x component of velocity at 2. We're going to evaluate the y component of velocity at 2. We're going to then resolve vectors. So little Pythagorean theorem style calculation here. Uh, we're squaring those individual velocities, we're summing them, and then we're taking a square root in order to solve for the hypotenuse, since x would be horizontal and y would be vertical. Hypotenuse is going to connect those two vectors. And in this case, what you end up with, you don't have to do the evaluation here. This top line would receive full credit. You do have access to the calculator. Now, it does waste a little bit of time. You take on a little bit of extra risk to pop this into the calculator and give an answer like this, uh, but this will be what the scoring guidelines should list once they come out. Part B asks us to find the total distance traveled by the particle on the interval zero to two. Show the setup for your calculation. So this is basically finding the curve length of x of t comma y of t on the interval zero to two. So the formula for curve length for a parametric curve or a plane curve is going to be the square root of x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared. We're doing that integral with respect to t and in this case the values of t that we want for our limits of integration are identified. Here's the setup for our calculation. Now the calculator is in play so you can use your calculator's capability to evaluate that and you would have to do that here you end up with this rounded to the third digit past the decimal, uh, you wouldn't get away with not going to the calculator in this spot because this right here is not something that depends on numbers alone. So you would have to show that you know how to evaluate that and be, can be successful in doing so with your calculator. Part C asks us to find the Y coordinate of the position of the particle at time zero. Show the setup for your calculation. So we know the y coordinate is 6 at time 2. So I'm going to have to figure out my y coordinate at time 0 by working back from that y coordinate at time 2. So I'm going to take the y coordinate at the time 2, 6, and I'm going to add on the change in the y coordinate from the time that I know it to the time that I want it by integrating the rate of change of the y coordinate, which in this case would be the y component of velocity. So it, you, you will recognize that these limits of integration, we don't have the smaller numerical value down here and the larger numerical value up here. That's fine. You have access to the calculator here. You can type this in exactly as is. If you do want to flip the limits of integration and swap the sign of the integral from positive to negative, you can do that. You'd have to do that if you were in a position where you were using signed area arguments. That's not the case for us right now. So here we can just go to the calculator like this and end up with our result rounded to the third digit past the decimal of negative 1.174. Last part of this, probably the trickiest part in my opinion, says on the interval 2 to 8, particle remains in the first quadrant. Find all times t in the interval 2 to 8 when the particle is moving toward the x-axis. Give a reason for your answer. 
So the reason why it's significant that the particle is remaining in the first quadrant is we know that y is positive in the first quadrant. If the particle is moving toward the x-axis, the y-coordinate is going to be decreasing. If y were somehow negative, that's not the case for this part of the problem, but if y were negative, we would need to see y increasing to be moving toward the x-axis, right? But for our case, because y is positive, when the y-coordinate is decreasing, the particle will be moving toward the x-axis, y is going to be decreasing when the rate of change of y, the y component of velocity, is negative. This is a graph of y prime of t on the interval 2 to 8, and what you'll notice is you'll notice that it's positive, 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 the velocity is, until we get to this location here, and then we go negative throughout the remaining stretch of the graph. If you take a few seconds on the calculator to find the zero, what you'll end up with is approximately 5.222. So the y-coordinate is going to be decreasing on the interval 5.222 to 8.